Greetings, Saint Sister Melissa here. Welcome to the Kingdom Seekers of Yah, where it is all about seeking the kingdom of Elohim and his righteousness. Loving Yahuwah with all of our heart, soul, mind, and strength. And I'm really, really happy. I'm always happy when I'm coming again to bring another message to you. I'm always happy and delighted about it. However, today, I'm coming with a warning and a call for all prayer warriors. And it is something that concerns the next generation. And it's really, really serious. It's very, very serious. I want to ask you to stick with me till the end, to hear everything that I have to say and to join me in prayer. Now, when we, one thing we were not taught of in schools or made to unrecognize and value when we were going to school is the beauty of a young child coming into this world. When a child comes into this world, when a baby is born, that baby is given the ruach of Elohim. And that's a beautiful thing. Saints, regardless of whether that child was planned or unplanned, it was a beautiful thing. Because no child is born unless Elohim has decreed it so. I'm telling you this. No child is conceived unless Elohim has decreed it so. You remember when Abraham went and Abimelech wanted to take his wife and Elohim shut all the wombs, all the wombs, of the women in that kingdom. I remember reading in the book of Yasher, one of the lost books of the Bible, the books, one of the books that was taken out. And in that book, it was saying that because Jacob had loved Rachel more than Leah, Yahuwah shut Rachel's womb because he had loved Rachel and he hated Leah. And of course, Yahuwah didn't approve of the hatred. And because of that, he shut her womb. So it's really important to understand that no child is conceived. No child comes forth unto this world unless Elohim had given the decree for this child to be born. And when this child is born, do you understand that, that when this child is born, this child can cry its first cry eh! because of the Ruach Elohim, the Ruach Elohim, the spirit of life that is in this child. It is from Elohim. Okay. But there is something else that when this child is born also, we have an adversary, the devil, who is hungry, who wants the, the, that, the soul of that child, who wants to bring that child down to the nation. So it's very, very important for us to recognize. I don't know if it's not something that is heavy on your heart. I pray that by listening to me today, that it would be a matter that you also would include in the, your list of inter intercessory prayer points to pray for the, the next generation. Because this dream I'm going to share is something Yahuwah showed me. It concerns the next generation and it is very, very serious. As I was preparing for this and unpacking the dream, I was reflecting on the different generations. And I, you know, when you look back at the generation X, in that generation that had more values, they dressed differently. But when you look at some of the negative effects that had already started in that generation, you had where women started going out to work and children were coming home to an empty house. And that generation was known as the, lock, the latchkey generation. Then the increasing divorce started that time, rising childcare started that time, because of course, a lot more women are going out to work. And then you had the generation Y, and the generation Y generation started to be influenced by the internet. There was big, they were beginning to be influenced by celebrities. Then you have the generation Z, okay? So generation Y is the millennial generation, like myself, born in the 1980s and the 1990s. And then you have the Generation Z, those born in the year um, 2000 from to 2010. And that generation is, is tech savvy, saturated with advertisements um, and heavily influenced by celebrities. And now when you look at today, what the marketers, it is the marketers who have done this, who have who has classified the different generations so that they could market to them. And the marketers now have classified this new generation called the Alpha Generation, born from 2010 to present. And that alpha generation is a generation that is heavily dominated by electronic technology, heavily dominated by social networks, heavily dominated by the celebrities and the influencers, heavily, heavily dominated. Now, each of these different groups or these different generational groups have different beliefs, have different values, has, the, has, has a different culture. You know, different, even sometimes different language, right? The different slangs and the colloquialisms and the things of that generation. It's important to see that things are changing. You see that change, that drastic change that has happened 
across the generations where it has become worse. It hasn't become better. And it has become worse because they're actually preparing the world for the coming and reign of the Antichrist. And I want you to listen to me very carefully about what I'm about to say. Because Satan's plan, listen to me very carefully. Satan's plan is to take away the power, ability, and responsibility from parents and put it in the hands of government. I'm warning you, we need to pray. Satan's plan is to take away that power that we have as parents. The responsibility that we have as parents over our children to take it away from us and put it in the hands of government. It has started happening in America. It has started happening in a few countries around the world like France who recently banned homeschooling. That parents can no longer homeschool their children except in crucial, crucial circumstances. That liberty is no longer given to parents. We have in America where children are being taken from their parents. I read a news article of Christian parents where their son was taken from their Christian parents and placed in a G-E-N-D-E-R affirming home, right? Because, of course, they're Christians. So his plan, this is about to come. Do you recognize how many countries around the world that have elections this year that is going to cement the leadership for the next five years? that is going to send the world in a certain direction for the next five years. I want to say to you, this is his plan and this is coming. He's going to do all that he can to try to take away the power and responsibility that we have as parents, those liberties that we have to bring up our children, to train our children, to teach our children, to, to, to instruct our children, to take it away from our hands and put it in the hands of government. We need to pray. The Heavenly Father has showed me something in a dream. When he sends a dream, he sends a dream so that you'll know what to pray for, when to go into spiritual warfare. You'll know the plan of the enemy. It's a call to, for repentance or whatever the purpose. There are times I dream and it's a call for spiritual warfare, right? Depending on that dream. I've dreamt of Christians, cast um, of witches casting spells on Christians on top of a mountain. I knew it was time for spiritual warfare. There are times I dream and it's a call for repentance. There are times I dream. I remember I dreamt of someone. And this lady was stretching her tongue, you know, wiggling her tongue this kind of way, right in that person's face, like literally almost touching their nose. And a man was coming with torture tools. And he wouldn't believe that very same day, that morning when I woke up, I went into intercessory prayer for that person. That very same day, that person said to me that someone was spreading lies on him at work that reached the manager. And it was a tale bearer a tail bearer eventually by the glory of yah it got solved because of course it was a lie it was a tail bearer spreading lies so when you have dreams don't say oh this is a stupid dream you know i dream of a woman wiggling her tongue in his face you know this kind of way somebody coming to torture the person stupid dream huh? no pray about it ask the father for guidance and interpretation because he gives the dream pray about it i don't share all my dreams I dream a lot, but I don't share all my dreams. But there are two that I'm going to share this week. And the one, the first one, it, it, it has two parts. The first part I will share in my next video. But I'm only going to share the second part today. The dream is relating to the next generation, to the children. But you can recall, in January 2023, I, I made a video called Parents Save Your Children. And I shared a dream in that video that I had, the, I think either the November or December of that, the year before, and where I was in a classroom and a demonic entity was came into the classroom. And when I came out of a door from that classroom, I said, oh no, they're coming for the children. And in that very same video, I shared the clip that I ended up finding last year, um, a clip of LG. Uh, 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 uh. and they're singing we're coming for your children we're coming for your children in that clip the very same words that were in my dream the very same words the very same words it's been two years now i've been homeschooling my children and i know it's by the guidance of the heavenly father because he showed it i didn't understand it fully back then but it, it, it revealed itself afterwards he showed me they're coming for the children they're coming for the children we saw what took place last year for certain month. Awful things that took place for certain month last year. We saw it. 
We saw the disgusting things that took place in some of the schools and in the streets, people in their body in their in their body suit and children seeing these people in their body suit as they're born. We saw some disgusting things that happened for certain month. And I'm telling you, worse is coming. Why is this worse? What can be worse? I had this dream of being in a classroom. And I'm in this classroom with my husband. And no, not a classroom, it was an auditorium. It was huge, huge. There were people, parents. There were parents, parents, parents with children. It was full. There were so many parents. And this woman stood up and she's saying, this is what we're going to be teaching your children. Divine self, divine healing. And she listed a whole list of things. I can't remember if it's seven or ten. I can't remember. You know, when you dream, sometimes you don't remember everything. But all I remember is that in front of everything that they were going to teach, it had the word divine in front of it. In front of everything. And I'm, I raised my hand in the dream because I wanted to say something. And I said to her, if you're teaching about divine Elohim, divine according to scripture, of our divine father, that's fine. Any other divine teaching is occultic. And she pretended she didn't hear me. And she said, give me a minute. And she attended to a lady. And then she took a phone call. And then she was fidgeting with her phone. And she was doing all sorts of things. And I realized she's trying to ignore me. So I turned to the headmaster in the school, which was a man. He was the principal. And I said to him, I have one thing to say, one thing, one thing to say, and then my husband and I will be leaving. If you're teaching about the divine Elohim, divine according to scripture, that's fine. But any other divine teaching, any other divine indoctrination is occultic. It's wrong. Don't do it. And we walked out. Now, somebody listening to me will say, well, there's nothing wrong with divine, right? There's nothing wrong with divine. But when you don't know the meaning of things, when you don't know the origin of some teachings, when you don't know the origin of some indoctrination, some sayings, you can be easily misled. Easily misled. The divine self is occultic and is linked to spiritual alchemy, right? Divine means of or like God, a God, right? It's a purely satanic doctrine. I want to read an excerpt come from this book, Lucifer Dethroned. And it's a book by William Snubbelin. And he used to be a Freemason. And of course, now he's saved. He calls on the name of Yeshua. He calls on the name of Yahusha. You know, the father and the son's divine name, the true name. And not the fake made up name. Listen to what he says. He had taught us that many of the doctrines of the Wicca, so Wicca is witchcraft and Judaism, that's also Freemasonry, um, were quite identical to those of Mormonism. Mormonism have nothing to do with Yahusha. For example, both believe in a God and goddess deity, pre-existence as spirit children, that you can evolve into a God or goddess yourself in marriage for time and eternity in secret initiatory rituals, that you can evolve into a God or goddess yourself. He's saying the Wicca, which is witchcraft, the witchcraft church, the Druids and even the Mormons, Mormons believe that you can evolve into a God yourself. That is what the divine teaching is about. The divine self, divine healing of a God, being like a God yourself. We have Madame Blavatsky and anybody in occult will certainly know her because she's one of the prominent mystics in that society. And she says that the divine self is the inner God. That's what she says, is the inner God. So we have to be very, very careful. What did Satan himself say to Eve? Let's just look at that quickly. If we remember in the book of Genesis, what did Satan say to Eve? Now the serpent was more subtle than any beast of the field which Yahuwah Elohim has, had made. And he said unto the woman, Yea, has Elohim said he shall not eat of every tree of the garden? And the woman said unto the serpent, We may eat of the fruit of the trees of the garden, but of the fruit of the tree which is in the midst of the garden, Elohim has said, We shall not eat of it, neither shall he touch it, lest he die. We all know this scripture. And the serpent said unto the woman, you shall not surely die. For Elohim knows that in the day you eat thereof, then your eyes shall be open, and you shall be as Elohim, knowing good and evil. You shall be as Elohim. You shall be as a God. That is the lie of the enemy. Remember, the devil is a liar. What happened when she ate it? Did she become like a God? No. 
she sealed both Adam and Eve, Adam and Chua, her name, her Hebrew name, Kua, both of them sealed the fate of every single person born into this world into condemnation. Now look at it in the Amplified verse 5. For Elohim knows that in the day you eat of it, your eyes will be open and you will be like Elohim. You will be like Elohim. And this is the divine teaching. You will be like Elohim. It's a teaching where you can, where you evolve to become an Elohim yourself. Now, how would this teaching become about? Will come about? It will come about through the indoctrination of children in school. If you look at what took place last year with the, the, the Saddam month, um, they were indoctrinating the children into sodomy. That's what was happening. The word that you can't see on YouTube, all of you know it. When I say Saddam, what, we, what I mean, they were indoctrinating the children. Now, I have an article written by Professor Anna Nisinska on the LSE website. And in that article, the American Enterprise Institute says that indoctrinated children is where they mold children to the culture shared by adult members of the nation state. It is the adults that are Sodom and Gomorrah, the adults. But by having Sodom month in school and causing the children to take part in Sodom month and complete activities that are surrounded around Sodom month and to complete activity sheets um, that, that are, are, are on the theme of Sodom month, they are indoctrinating the children to a culture that is shared by the adults of the nation. Now, they go on to say that this indoctrination caused them to become uncritically accept to, to cause them to uncritically accept certain beliefs, uncritically accept it. Professor Anna Nisinska says, indoctrination at school can be instrumental to the consolidation of political power. It can be instrumental to the consolidation, mark this, of political power. What does this mean? I'm going to get back to this. Mark this. She goes on to say, individuals with greater political indoctrination will place the responsibility for their overall life in a large part on government. Individuals with greater political indoctrination will place the responsibility for their overall life in a large part on government. What does this mean? It means that this indoctrinated generation to come, highly indoctrinated generation to come, will become dependent on the beast system, will become dependent on the antichrist, antichrist system. What did, what, did, what did the professor say? Indoctrination at school can be instrumental to the consolidation of political power. Instrumental to the consolidation of political power. Saints, are you seeing this? Are you seeing this? So when you have children being indoctrinated that they are like, they are gods, they can become a god. They can attain that higher self, their inner god, according to Madame Blavatsky, the highest witch that ever lived, right? Now, wouldn't it be easy for them to accept the Antichrist who has crowned himself Elohim, who has attained that higher state as a god, as an Elohim, small e? It will become easier for them to accept the Antichrist because the, we, we have a society where everyone is aspiring to achieve that higher self, that state of their divine self, that state of being like a god, being like an Elohim, small e. What does this also mean, this divine teaching to children? They will rely on themselves. They will not rely on Elohim. They would have no need for an Elohim because they are an Elohim themselves, striving and aspiring to become one as they strive to aspire to that higher state. They rely on themselves to get to that state. In other words, they are also, they will also be creating a form of idolatry. We have, well, Yahuwah said, do you know that idolatry is not only something physical? You can have idolatry in your heart. You can idolize things in your heart without even realizing you can idolize yourself. 
So in other words, they will be idolizing themselves. Remember what Yahuwah said to Ezekiel in Ezekiel, I think it's chapter 14. These men have set up idols in their heart and have put a stumbling block in their way. They have set up idols in their heart. So in essence, this divine teaching that is coming, it's always been around, but it's going to escalate to another level. This divine teaching that is coming, this divine indoctrination that is coming to the children, they are creating a rebellious generation. A generation that will rebel against the Elohim of the Shamaim of the heavens. So I have a warning to parents today. I have a warning to the saints today. What are we supposed to be teaching our children? Deuteronomy 6. Hey, O Yasharel. Yahuwah Eloheka, Yahuwah is one. And you shall love Yahuwah with all of your heart, with all of your soul, and with all of your mind. And these words you shall teach unto your children. This is what the scripture says. These words you shall teach unto your children. This is what we as parents, we as saints have to teach to our children. To love Yahuwah Eloheka with all of your heart, meaning Yahuwah your Elohim, with all of your soul and with all of your might. And these days, these words, verse 6, which I command you this day, shall be in your heart. And you shall teach them diligently unto your children. And shall talk of them when you sit in your house. And when you walk by the way. And when you lie down. And when you rise up. And shall bind them for a sign upon your hand. And they shall be as frontlets between your eyes. And you shall write them upon the post of your house and on your gates. Do you get this? In other words, you, you, if you want to call it an obsession, it's an obsession. It is what you talk about. And it is a good obsession to have. It is a good obsession to have. It's a good passion to have. Obsession is the wrong word. Let's call it passion. It's a good passion to have. A good passion. And I have been standing on this. We have been standing upon this in this house. I've been teaching it to my children. The last school term that ended, the entire, we have a theme each term. And that theme, that term was loving Yahuwah with all of your heart. Every day, mama, I did my three prayers a day. No, it's not that I'm telling them, or oh, it's the number of time you pray. I'm trying to instill habit. That's why I set a number to it, a minimum number. Because I want to instill the habits, the habit. Mama, when you're going to bed, we sing a prayer. I'm ready to say prayers at night. Mama, you forgot to ask the question. You forgot to ask the question, my seven-year-old. We did our prayers three times today. I prayed as soon as I opened my eyes on the bed, I remember to say thank you, Father, for the day. When we were having we were having prayers yesterday evening, as soon as prayers was, was finished, Raphael got up, my youngest. And I'm like, where are you going? He's like, I have to do my third prayer. I promised myself that after family prayers, I was going to do my third prayer for the day. And I just glorified the Father. I glorified him and exalted his holy name. Because we as parents have a responsibility to our children and we will be held accountable. As Christians, they only focus on themselves and thinking that, hey, we will only be accountable for that. We'll also be accountable for how we raised our children. Did we teach them what Yahuwah said to teach them? Or did we teach them to love the world? Or did we teach them to cover the next iPhone? To cover the next MacBook? To cover the next tech? Or did we teach them to spend all the time you want on TikTok? And to sit three hours inside in front of the Xbox? Did we tell them to leave me? Leave me alone. I don't have time right now. But you could go, go play all your Xbox games. What did we teach them? Leave them in their room to go and watch six hours or three, four, five hours, six hours of Netflix streaming. Consume, consume, consume social networks. What did we teach our children? What did we teach our children? We will be held accountable for it. And if you're listen to, listening to me today and you're a parent, it's not too late to start. If you're a grandparent, when your grandchildren come around, it's not too late to start. If you didn't do it and you had kids and they all grown up, just repent. And tell the father you didn't know and repent. But when you get to interact with your grandchildren, it's not too late to start. It is not too late to start. We have to teach our children when they sit in the house, when they walk by the way, when they lie down, when they rise up. This is what Yahuwah says. This is scripture. 
and that Satan has a plan to take that power and responsibility from your hands and from my hands and to put it in the hands of government that they can take people's children and they can cut off body parts and they can change them up and make them look like some other alien and put them in homes to affirm the indoctrination. Send them to the pit of hell. The pit of hell. Because of evil men, evil government, governmental laws. And it's only Yahuwah by his son Yahusha Hamashiach that can deliver that child. And when I look at some of the testimonies of children who came out of that 16 years, 18 years, regretting they had done that, and the trauma on their minds, and there is no care. There is no care provided by the same government for children who came out and want to turn away from that path of having cut off their body parts and take all the different hormones into them and want to become what this were meant to be when they were born. No care for them, no support for them, no counseling for them. I didn't mean to come on and cry. Sending children to hell. Sending children to hell. I'm coming to call all prayer warriors, all saints of Elohim, join me in intercessory prayer. Join me in intercessory prayer. Write down these prayer points. Number one, let us pray for protection for our children from the machinations of the enemy and our families, that our children will not be the prey of the enemy. We've got to pray against those machinations of the enemy that our children will not be prey of the enemy. Number two, pray against the strongholds of idolatry that they be casted down. Number three, pray for the spirit of discernment for parents that they will be able to do what is right to protect their children. Some of you watching me still have your children in the public school system. Because you think you trust the public school and think that when you go to the parents meeting and you, you voice your concern that it's going to make a difference. Nothing's going to stop the indoctrination that's coming. Nothing is going to stop the indoctrination that's coming. They will take the power from your hands before they bring it in so you can say nothing against it. And don't talk about if Biden wins that election again. I'm not for either candidate, but I'm telling you, since Biden has been there, we saw what happened, what this man has brought since he has been there, the evil that has been brought to America been amplified since he has been there against the children, the Sodom and Gomorrah. Parents, I'm warning you, it's time to pray. And if you are if you are a saint of Elohim, you don't have children, you still can pray. Men ought always to pray and not to faint. It is a command of Yahusha. You've got to pray. You've got to pray for your nation. You've got to pray for the children. You've got to pray for the generation. And pray for the spirit of discernment, parents, so that if you have to take your child out, you would know when is the time to do it for Yahuwah to guide you. Pray that he bind this satanic doctrine that has no power or authority on the minds of our children. Bind this satanic doctrine of this, this satanic doctrine of the divine self divine healing divine identities divine whatever this satanic doctrine of the divine self to bind it that it has no power of all authority on the minds of our children and that the saints will wake up and take charge over their children so that the children will be steadfast with you it's time to wake up saints it's time to wake up and take authority no more lukewarm, no more sleeping. Satan is coming for the next generation with a vengeance. You thought last year was bad? With people in their bodysuits, naked bodysuits? You thought last year was bad? Children witnessing certain things I don't want to talk about in this air? You thought last year was bad? We need to pray. It's time to go into prayer. It's time to pray. For the children and to pray for the next generation it's time to pray because the enemy is setting things up for the coming antichrist it's very soon
I'm telling you, we can look around the world and we can see that that time is near since. The, the, the reign of the Antichrist is very, very near. But you know what? Those who trust in Yahuwah shall be as Mount Zion that cannot be moved. Trust in Yahuwah. Teach your children of Elohim and good shall be the peace of your children. We have certain commands according to scripture that we have to start fulfilling if you're not fulfilling. Pray and ask for wisdom to fulfill better. Because you know what? Only those in Yahuwah will have peace. So I thank you for hearing me out. Thank you for watching me live. And I pray and invite you to join me on this journey of interceding for the children, interceding for this generation. Join me on this journey because it's serious. It is really, really serious. And it, it breaks my heart. It really breaks my heart. I come with a stark warning today. A stark, stark warning today. I remember when I had that last dream and I said they were coming for the children and that demonic entity was in the classroom. And so said in 2022, so said it happened. It happened. 2023, we saw the most awful things take place in the classrooms. Awful things, saints. Children being taught certain things that you shouldn't do. I know firsthand a child came home with homework, taught certain things that they shouldn't do. Nine years old. And I'm telling you now, another wave is coming. But this wave, although it might seem like it's nothing's wrong with that. It's deadly. It's deadly. And it's going to set them up to accept the Antichrist when he comes. So we've got to pray. We've got to pray. We've got to raise up our voices. Let the voice of the righteous be heard in prayer. The effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much. Let us pray. Let us go on our knees and call upon the heavenly father with fervor, with all of our heart, with all of our soul and go into prayer and bind these satanic doctrines that they have no power over our children in the name of Yahusha, Hamashiach. I think I'll end here now. I thank you. And I'll be coming this week with the second part of my dream. This one is on a different topic, but another thing that's coming soon. Be blessed. And if you haven't subscribed, please feel free to subscribe. It would be great to have you part of the Kingdom Seekers of Yah community. I love you with the love of Mashiach. Bye for now.